So hello there and welcome to another tutorial. My name is Tanya Bakshi and this time we're going to be going over, well, the second part for my Tower of Hanoi series. Now this is just the second part, so now I'm going to be explaining the algorithm and showing you a little implementation of it in Swift. Again, this uses trees, and so yeah, I'm just going to be explaining it to you. So let's get started, let's dive straight into this. I have really nothing to explain yet. However, as I said already like a million times, we're using trees for this to happen, and I have the whiteboard ready here, as you can see. So what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be telling you how we can use my custom algorithm to solve the Tower of Hanoi uh, for four disks. Okay, so that's four disks we're going to be solving using this method. First of all, as you can see, this is going to be the tree area, but uh, this green shaded area over here will be an array, basically, of all the instructions that we have gathered thus far. So let's just dive straight into it. Now, basically what we're going to be doing is we need to uh, make a set of steps that we're going to be taking. So, what my current plan is, we want to first of all move four disks from, also, uh, yeah, uh, I'm going to be referring to peg 1 as peg A, peg 2 as peg B, and peg 3 as peg C, in case you were wondering. So now, what I'm going to say is we're using four disks from A to C. However, we can use B in the middle if we need to. Okay, perfect. Now, this is our beginning. Like, what are we going to be doing from now on? Basically, what we have to do is we're going to take three disks now. We're going to move it from uh, peg A to peg B, the first three disks. Then the remaining disk on peg A will be moved to peg C. Then the remaining pegs on peg B will be moved to peg C. And then, like that, all four disks will be on peg C. So now how are we going to do this? We know that we have to move three disks. First of all, let me just make a little line so you can see. First, this is the first tree that I'm, the first line that I'm making. We know that we have to move uh, three disks from, actually, uh, just give me a sec, so you can see that a bit better. I'm just going to make it a bit bigger. Okay, so now we're moving three disks from peg A to peg B using peg C. Now you might already start noticing a pattern, but next we're going to be moving peg, I mean one disk from peg A to peg C using B. Again, you're getting this pattern. And then finally what we're going to be doing is we're going to be moving those three disks from peg B to peg C using peg A. It is that simple. Now here is our pattern. Essentially what we're doing is we're taking our beginning, uh, for example, node. This is one node in our tree. Now this node has four for its disk value, A for its from peg, B for its using peg, and C for its to peg. Now the first thing that this node wants to do is move three disks from A to B. And so essentially what we're doing is we're saying four minus one is three, then we're just swapping these two over here. B and C we're swapping to make CB, meaning ACB, A to B using C. Then over here basically what we're doing on the middle, on the second node, is we are just saying, okay, we're going to move one disk from A to C using B. That one disk on A going to C. 
Then finally what we're going to do is we're going to move the three disks that we moved to B back over to C using A. It's that simple. Now if you don't understand this yet, that's probably because I haven't filled in the rest of the table. Now I'm going to be filling in the rest of the table with you, then I'll explain what this tree means, then I'll explain the actual algorithm, then we're going to go, going to, go to the Mac part. Okay, so now, from 3ACB, what are we going to be doing? First of all, we know that the first node over here is just disks minus 1. Okay, so the disks number for this specific node will be 3 minus 1, which is 2. Okay, so we have two disks. We've determined that. Then we know we have to swap the using peg and the two peg. So ACB will become ABC, as you can see. Now we know that the second node will have always one disk, uh, so we can just write a one. Right? And we know it'll have the exact same setup as these three pegs. So it'll have ABC. Or, sorry, ACB. Because it's coming from this node. Then, finally, the third node. Which will have, again, disks minus one, which will be two in this case. And then, the two, I mean, the from peg and the using peg have to be reversed. And so I'm going to say C, A, B. Now we have constructed a little, we've gone in one depth. But first of all, we know one cannot be extended. Like that's the simplest thing you can do. Just move one disk from A to C. You don't need instructions on how to do that. But moving three disks from A to B, you need instructions. So this will be continued. This is just going to stop right here, and I'm going to tell you what we're going to do with this. But this is, again, three, not one. So we're going to extend it further. So now let's just um, bring it further. Now three minus one is two. Now B, A, C. We have to uh, switch over the two and using pe uh, the pegs. So this will become B, C, A. So I'm going to write, uh, or sorry, yeah, B, C, A. Boom. Next, what we're going to do for the second node is we are going to say, again, we just know that it's one disk with the exact same peg setup. So we're going to say one B A C. Okay, it's that simple. Next, the third node, which will be down here. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch the from and use A nodes. And we're going to remove one from the disks. So that would be two disks. And if we swap B and A, that would be A B C. Perfect. Okay, so we are making progress with our tree, but we still have a few more things to do. Because as you can see, we have a two, which is not told, which we do not know how to solve. We have another two, we and we have two more twos. So now we have four more things to expand, and then theoretically we should have a set of instructions, right? Well, let's see. So we see we're starting off from here. We have two from A to B C using B. So if I expand, we know that 2 minus 1 is 1, of course. And so the number of disks will be 1. OK. Next, we have to swap the using and the two pegs. So that'll be A, C, B. A, C, B. OK. Then we're going to do our middle peg, or our, uh, sorry, our second node get confused between those two sometimes. Uh, and so we know that's of course just one uh, disk, but it's the exact same peg setup. So we're going to say disk one with the exact same peg setup, which is ABC. 
Then finally, our third node. Which 2 minus 1 is 1 disk. Uh, and then A and B reverse, that would be B, A, C. And perfect. Now we've solved this. Now let's solve this node. So now this node's first node, child node actually, will be, let's see, 2 minus 1, that's 1 for disks. And then A and B reversed, that would be CBA. Perfect. Next, what we have is the second node. Okay, so now we know it's the exact same peg setup with just one disk instead. So that would be CAB. Finally, the third node, child node of this node. Uh, and so we know that's 2 minus 1, that's one disk. Then we have C and A have to be reversed, so that would be ACB. And perfect. Next, we're going to solve this one and this one, and we'll be done. Okay, so 2BCA, 2 minus 1, that's 1. So we know the number of disks for this first child node will be 1. Then we know C and A flipped will be uh, AC, so BAC. Then I'm going to create the um, basically second node, child node, for this parent node, which will have, anyway, uh, the one disk and the exact same peg setup, so one BCA. Then we're going to go for the third child node, which will be two minus one, that's one. And then B and C flipped, so it will be CBA. And now, just really quickly, let me just tell you, this will work with both even and odd disks. Because as you can see, here we have a node that has an odd number, and it's still working over here. It's working fine. It's just that I wanted a slightly bigger um, uh, pe um, disks uh, for this example so you can really see how this tree is formed. And if I were to choose something like five, however, this would just be gigantic. So I am not going to go so huge as to five, but I want a moderately big uh, tree so that you can really see how it's going to three, how it's going to two, how it's going to one, etc., etc. Okay, continuing. Now that we've solved this node's child nodes, we don't need to do it for this one because that's a 1. Then we can do it for this one, however, this node. Now this is 2ABC, so 2 minus 1, we know that's 1. So its first node's uh, number of disks should be 1. Then B and C flipped is CB, so ACB. Okay. Uh, then the second node, we all know that this is just going to be uh, a one disk with the exact same peg setup. So that would be one ABC. Uh, next, the third child node. So let's just do that. Now we know two minus one is one, so that would mean the number of disks is one. And then A and B flipped is BA, so BAC meaning this will be the end result. And now we have completed our tree. Now basically, this is, a f this is how you can take it into like consideration. This is a fully grown apple tree. Now we need to pick the ripe apples off, essentially. And the ripe apples are the ones with one disc. And it has to be done from most top right down, okay? Just top right from here down. Now you may be wondering, wait a minute, are these just the instructions that we're gonna pick off? No, and you'll see what I mean. So essentially what I'm saying is whenever you see a one in this tree, 
and then it's uh, discs. These discs are essentially what we're going to take out and put into the instructions. For example, 1A, B, C will be taken as A to C by our program and then given to the user. But we can't just take this in any random order. That just wouldn't work. However, what we are going to do is let's just say I get a marker. We see we're going here. We have this initial node. It has its own first node. Then it has its own first node. Now it has its own first node. And then it ends here. This is the last one. So this is the first, uh, basically, uh, node that I've encountered that has one disk on it. So I can say, I can note down A, B. I can, I can put that into my array as A to B. So I'm going to note that down as A to B. So we've got one instruction down. Now, as you can see, we have to go back because we cannot go forward. That, ju that would just be nil. So we have over here the second node for this. OK, so this node has a second node. This is the second time we've got over with a this with a uh, instruction with one in it. And we can see it says A to C. So we're going to follow what it says and move from A over to C. Then we're going to go back and we're going to say, OK, come down over here. And we see, oh, third node. This also has a 1. So it says B to C. That means note down from B to C. OK. Now we go back. We see, oh, we checked all these, all the child nodes for this node. Now we have to go back. Now we see for this node, what's its second child node? Because we've done the first. Oh, it has a 1. So, well, we say A to B. Perfect. Note it down. A to B. Perfect. Now, we cannot expand further than this again. That would just be nil. So we say, OK, come back over here. And we're done the second child node for this node. So go down here. And so from here, we have a first node. So this is a 1. And we're going to say C to A. So we just note down C to A. Perfect. Then we go back to the second node, C to B. Perfect. C to B. Then we go back and we say, oh, third node, A to B. Perfect. Note that down. A to B. Come back, come back, come back, because we are done, basically, We've gone into this node, and we've gone into its first node, and we've completed all of its three child nodes. Now we're coming back. Then we grab an apple from here, then we come back, and we grab all of these three child nodes, and we just noticed, just like we got all the three child nodes from this, we got it from this node. So now this node is no longer needed by us. So either we can just delete it, but why would you want to delete it, when you can just keep it and go to the next. And now, since we are initiating this from this node, we have to look at its second node, which is a one disk. And this is A to C, so I'm going to note that down. A to C. Perfect, there. Now we're going to look at its third node, which is again a three. Now, this has a first node, which has its own first node, but then that's the end of the line, so it's B to C. Again, going back, oh, this has a second node, B to A. Now come back, this has its own third node, which is C to A, which I can just note down conveniently. Coming back, we see, OK, perfect. Uh, we're done the first node and all its three child nodes. Now we have to do the uh, three's second node. Uh, so uh, wait, just really quickly note if you were, if you want to, if you make this connection from the other part one that I just made, uh, actually, 
four discs will require 15 turns because uh, actually 2 to the power 4, 16 minus 1 is 15, meaning it'll take 15 turns. Uh, so that's why I have exactly 15 elements in this array over here uh, so that we can see if we have the correct number of moves. Anyway, continuing. Now we've gotten back from here, here, here. Now we're going to the second node, which is B to C. So I can just write that down. B to C. Next we're going to go to its third node, which has its own first node, which is A to B. Then it has its own second node, which is A to C. Then it has its own third node, which is B to C. Now we can go back, say back, back, back. And now once we return this to this initial node, we know that we've gone through all this tree. And that means we have a perfectly good set of instructions to solve four discs in the Tower of Noah in the minimum number of moves possible. Hope you enjoyed that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be taking a picture of this. I'm going to move it onto my Mac and I'm going to show you that these moves will actually solve a Tower of Hanoi game. Okay, so that was actually pretty much it for the whiteboard part of this video. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Now we're going to be going to the Mac part where I'm also going to be showing you an implementation of this in Swift. Hope you enjoy. Let's get to it. So welcome back to the Mac part. Now I'm going to be cropping this image so we can only see the instructions. Then I'm going to be going to the Tower of Hanoi simulator online, the Flash simulator. Uh, and then we're just going to be seeing how it works. I'm going to show you the Swift implementation and then we'll be done. Okay, so let's get started with uh, this whiteboard image over here. Make my face smaller. Uh, come over here and I'm just going to select these instructions that we have created on the whiteboard. And if, in case you didn't already know this, if you select something in preview and then you click Command K, crops that right out. Okay, then I'm going to use El Capitan's main feature, I guess. I'm going to press this down. Actually, I guess I have to have these uh, in small view. Uh, I'm going to press this down, put this over here, put this over here, make this a bit bigger, and here we are ready. So now, as you can see, I have the Tower of Noe on one side, and then I have the instructions on the other. So again, this is for four disks, and let's get started. Now, first of all, it tells us to solve A to B. So uh, we're on A to B over here, we're on the first one. So A to B. Boom. Then it says A to C. Okay, I'll do that. Then it says B to C. Then it says A to B. Then it's telling you to move from C to A. Again, as you, if you really look at this pattern, and if you watch part one, you realize that we're using the exact same algorithm, it's just the computer found out these moves. Again, in case you haven't watched part one, this website is mathisfun.com that allows me to simulate the Tower of Hanoi, uh, and there's a Flash version and an HTML version, the links will be in the description. Continuing. Now after we've moved from C to A, we can move from C to B, then from A to B. And we've, uh, we've solved the first seven. And as you can see, we've moved three disks from A to B using C. Okay, now it tells us to move from A to C. Interesting. Then it says B to C. Okay, I'll do that. Then it says B to A. Okay, then C to A. Interesting. B to C, not very surprising, then A to B, A to C, and finally B to C. Now, that was quite simple, and we have solved the, the game in exactly 15 moves. Now, when I was explaining this to you, you may have realized, oh god, this is going to be really extensive to program in, this is just going to be too much, but you're mistaken. This is actually quite simple to actually make. It's just that the implementation of it uh, is really easy. Just creating a command line interface isn't that easy. But we'll get into that later. First, what we have to get into is the Hanoi. 
So as you can see over here, this is a simple version uh, of an implementation in Swift. As you can see, it's very, very little code. And if I say uh, I want number of disks as, for example, three, it gives us the result. First of all, move A to C. Uh, or actually, you know what? Let me just actually follow these steps. So A to C first. Just to really quickly show you this works, A to C. Then it tells us to move A to B. Then it says C to B. Then it says A to C. Then it says uh, B to A. And then it says B to C. And then it says A to C. And as you can see, we've solved it in seven moves. So that was actually quite simple, uh, and that proves that this actually works. We can also do it for four, and it'll give us the instructions. Five, I think we might need the debug uh, console now. Uh, we can do it for six. I'm just quickly scrolling through these um, to see how it works. So you can see it eventually starts taking uh, some time to calculate uh, moves, because of course there are tons of moves for like nine different disks but uh, anyway so now okay it got that um, there was an earlier version of this that I programmed in that would actually use the first algorithm that I used in part one and that could m at max do around five disks because it was very memory intensive but this is recursive yet it's not that memory intensive so as you can see this is a very efficient algorithm and let's get straight into coding this now now, first of all, this is an implementation of it. In part three, I'm going to be showing you the CUI, or how to create the command line interface for it. Okay, so now let me make my face a bit bigger. And so now I can just uh, comment this line out so we don't have all this random execution going on. And hide the debug console. So let's get into it by saying that, first of all, we are creating a class called Hanoi Node. And also, a quick tip, uh, if you're using a playground with really basic uh, functionality, like not even framework functionality, just no UI kit whatsoever or anything, you don't really need to spend excess memory importing framework or UI kit when you can just import Darwin and it takes up a bit less memory. So that's just a quick tip for you. Anyway, continuing. Inside of the Hanoi node class, we are noting the disks from using and two pegs so basically uh, when I would show you uh, over here on preview if I just control command Z that uh, each one of these was a node this was a node this was a node this was a node it had a disks from to and using value which were the pegs that it was from using into. And so now these are stored as strings because of course you can name your pegs. Then what we're doing is we have three computed properties. In case you don't know what a computed property is, well uh, I do have another tutorial with my A star pathfinding that will explain that but anyway let me just give a quick explanation but if you were wondering what A star pathfinding is a link will be in the description for sure. Okay so basically a computed property will allow you to it's just a variable, but when you get it, the proper, the value inside of this property is computed each time. Uh, so for example, uh, let's say I created um, a variable A, which is equal to something the user can enter, and variable B, which is also something the user can enter. Variable C, if it was a computed property, whenever you would get it, it would automatically already be equal to the value of A plus B. That simple so that you don't need to calculate it, then use it. No, just use it straight up and it gets calculated, like a function, but it has some limitations, like I can't take parameters. It's that simple. Okay, continuing. So now, we have leaf one, leaf two, and leaf three, which themselves are Hanoi nodes. Now, you may be thinking, if a Hanoi node contains a variable of a Hanoi node, and that itself has more Hanoi nodes, doesn't that just break my own rule of the barrier recursion that I talked about in my other recursion video, which there will be a link to in the description? 
Well, no, because this is optional, meaning at any time I can make this nil, meaning there will be nothing after that. That also means that I was lying to you a few minutes ago. Not lying, just, I'm sorry. But uh, as you can see, whenever you have one on the board, the tree doesn't just end there. There's actually a nil after this, but you usually ignore that due to the fact that it's just nil. Doesn't matter, it's just nil, I guess. Uh, and uh, same thing for all these ones. There's a nil after this, there's a nil after this, there's a nil after all of these, because it can't just abruptly end. It can't just stop at a Hanoi node, that's impossible. So that's just a quick uh, explanation of that for you. Anyway, continuing. Now, when you get leaf 1, we're creating a new final constant, which is equal to a new Hanoi node, which is the disks of this Hanoi node are equal to our disks minus 1, the current disks minus 1. The from value will be same from, but we're swapping the using peg and the to peg. Uh, so we're, for the using we're giving to, and for to we're giving using. That simple. Next, we are returning, uh, then we're using a quick uh, conditional. Uh, we're checking if final.disks greater than 0, meaning it is 1, or something bigger than 1. Then we ought to return that final variable, meaning continue, good job. Or else, nil, because we do not want an endless loop of recursion. Next in leaf 2, we're doing the same thing with the optional Hanoi node. We're still creating the final constant. However, this time, for the disks, we're just straight up giving 1, because we I taught that to you in the trees. Uh, then we are keeping from using and to the exact same. Then we're doing the exact same thing with the disks. However, instead of checking finals disks, because we know that's going to be 1, we're checking our own disks, so that we can see uh, if we should actually uh, continue and create this node. Finally, leaf 3, in which we are still creating final. We are putting the disks minus 1. However, we are swapping from and using, and we're keeping two the same. Then we're just, che then we're just checking if the final disks are greater than 0. If so, then return final, or else no. Then we just have a really quick initializer for this class, which takes the disks from using and to and sets the values to them. That was quick. Then we have a global variable named INST or instructions, uh, which is a string array. Then we have a Hanoi function. Now, simply put, this function is going to do all the dirty work for us. It's going to create the Hanoi node class, go through the tree, and basically grab all the values. It'll pick all the apples. And so, this function will take the disks, the name of the peg A, the name of peg B, and the name of peg C. Then we are creating a starting leaf, a constant. We are creating a Hanoi node in this, of course. We're setting the disks to the disk that the user gave us in the function declaration, from as A, using as B, and to as C, of course. Then what we're doing is we're checking if let L1 is equal to leaf.leaf1, .leaf1, meaning does this leaf have leaf1? If it does, then say if l1.disks is equal to 1. What, what's happening now is we're checking, is this ripe, essentially? Uh, if it is, pick it, or else, call yourself on this leaf. I'll explain what that means now. Meaning, if the disks are 1, then just take this instruction and append it into our instructions array. As leaf1 from, then leaf1 2. So if it were to say a 1 A, B, C, meaning one disk from A to C, it would actually just append A, C into the array. Or else, if it's actually a um, uh, real uh, uh, disk, uh, if it's the, what do you call it, if it's not 1, it's 2 or 3 or something greater than 1, then we're just going to call ourselves on disks minus 1 with the same from using and two values that we got from this leaf. 
Then we do the exact same thing for leaf two and the exact same thing for leaf three. No difference whatsoever. Except that in leaf two, if uh, the discs are not one, then we call ourselves with discs minus one and A is just A, B is just B, and C is just C. It'll eventually stop, we know that. Okay. Now, this function works, but it isn't too convenient to code in. This is due to the fact that you need to give it the disks, the A value, the B value, and the C value, and it doesn't return anything. Now, in order to fix that, I've actually created another function called Hanoi, just straight up Hanoi, not Hanoi uh, underscore. And so what's happening is this uh, function only takes uh, the disks as an integer and returns an array of strings or the instructions. Then we just call Hanoi on the disks that you gave us with the A peg named A, the B peg named B, and the C peg named C. Then we just return those instructions that uh, are created uh, once uh, you use the Hanoi function. And then, as you can see, if I just fill this in with, let's say, three disks, it worked. And that was actually all it for part two. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please uh, leave a like on this video. Uh, again, also subscribe to my channel if you're new. You can also contact me by either commenting down below. You can uh, um, also contact me on Twitter at Tajimani, or you can just email me at Tajimani at gmail.com. The email and Twitter handle that I just mentioned will be in the description if you can't spell them. And, yep, that's going to be it for this video. Again, part three is coming out really soon, and part three will have how to create a little simple uh, CUI, not GUI, command user interface, not um, graphical user interface, for this program. And that's going to be it for this video. Goodbye.